Hello and welcome to another meeting of the Min Munch Society, where I, your loyal and most intelligent host, regale you, my adoring public, with stories of dark notions. Ah, it looks like I have two loving guests here. Happy you can make it. Well, I don't have legs, and you put me here, so... This is basically kidnapping. Yep, still processing the whole talking thing. Ah, the Wicked Leo! <laughs> what brings you here, my friend? Oh, my long face. You know why. <laughs> what? It's not like I use my transdimensional powers to, you know, sneak into your room and uh, steal the crystal ball, which I know non-consequentially is the one Deus Ex Machina that'll make you show up because, uh, you know, you can be summoned with the crystal ball and you're already gone, aren't you? No, no, she's here in spirit. You know, for a little hat, you have so much sarcasm. Oh, thank you. So what is it that I want to do? I'm going to regale you with the story of the time that I met the Shibacabra after which, we're going to compare five different facts that we found, pieces of evidence, to see if that Chupacabra really was a Chupacabra, or maybe just my jerky older cousin picking on me. The Chupacabra Over a decade ago, farmers in the mining heart of Chile awoke to find their goats and sheep slaughtered, drained of blood by an unidentified predator that pierced the animal's neck, and thus created the rumor that would slowly grow into the legend of the Chupacabra. But first, my story. As a kid, I had a pretty modest upbringing. My mother, being a single parent, would always find ways to make sure that I would have a normal childhood, and that included vacations. And one of the most cost-affordable options, well, was to send me to Puerto Rico to visit my uncle's farm. No, I'm not complaining. I actually really enjoyed visiting that tropical paradise. Though it did come with some minor inconveniences. One being that the farm was located deep, deep in the Puerto Rican jungle. Which normally meant dirt roads and, more importantly, long, dark stretches of darkness whenever you stepped outside at night. <laughs> now, why was that important? Well because it made night travel insanely terrifying. Between the wildlife and the fear of making a wrong turn and ending up stranded in the middle of the jungle, it's not an experience that I really wanted to live through, but I would soon find out that I didn't really have a choice in the matter. On one particular night, my cousin noticed that I was getting restless, just hanging out in the house and I guess watching the sunset. They decided to treat us to a movie, which sounded amazing compared to the alternative. So we jumped in our jeep and proceeded to drive back to town through the dark underbrush. Now as stated before, the roads, they were bumpy, but that was to be expected. We played music and kept up a friendly conversation. Just another blissful summer night. But then the car stopped. It was as if someone had turned off all the power in the car. My cousin instantly freaked out because now she was stuck in the middle of nowhere with a child to look after. That's right, I was roughly 10 years old, but that's neither here nor there. And I'll admit it, I screamed. I mean, can you blame me? I was 12. Suddenly, we felt something like a bump rub up against the right side of the car. It, was, it wasn't a big push, but just enough to make the car rock. At this point, we were in full, don't die mode. My cousin began twisting the key like a madman while flooring the gas in a feeble attempt to kickstart the engine. Suddenly, the scratching stopped. Whatever it was that was tracking us had now made its way to the back of the car. Through the silence, we heard something that sounded like a low growl. It was so freaky. It was something that almost reverberated throughout the entire car. 
And then, without warning, the rear door of the jeep pops open, and as they stay back in pure horror, they see nothing but darkness. Letting out yet another embarrassing scream, my cousin somehow manages to get the car to restart immediately, and we sped out. Now, when we eventually got back to the farm and explained to my uncle what was happening, he gave us a knowing look. Must be the Shibakabra. He had explained that as a farmer, some of his livestock had already been hit, and it was rumored to be in the area. I found that dumbfounding. I asked him why hadn't anyone done anything about it. He turned to me and said, No one can believe in such things without being called crazy. And I don't know. I kind of disagree. But one thing's for sure. That experience stuck with me. And to this day, I honestly wonder. What was that? What stopped our car? What growled? What scratched? What bumped us? And what let us go? So that was my experience. Yeah, I know I'm crazy, but a healthy amount, I think. God, I hope so. And just as a quick plug, if you guys want to hear that story again without any of this explanation in this next part, go ahead and click that little button right there. It'll take you to that video and you can enjoy it. But if you want, you know, a full backstory and details, stick around. It's going to get interesting. Number one. Okay, so it turns out the creature actually didn't originate from Chile, but Puerto Rico. But hey, that's what cryptozoology is all about, right? Explaining new things and finding new facts? I, I, think that's, I think that's fair, right? I can't believe you tried to lie to the internet. Mm -mm -mm. For shame. However, Chile isn't exactly a stranger to its own attacks. The ones that have been reported are actually pretty similar to the ones in Puerto Rico. The creatures always describe the same way. Large. Large, but scaly, about the size of a small bear. Though its physical appearance differs from time to time, most do agree on a few similar things. One is its size. Its size is that of a small bear. It's known as being very agile, very quick, with large human-like claws used for scratching and holding its victims down. And perhaps the most striking of its features are going to be its fangs. The very same supposed fangs that he uses to suck the blood out of, well, pretty much anything that comes into way. Mostly animals, though. Now, the clip I'm about to show you is a little graphic, not too much, but if you are a fan of small sheep and not having them be attacked by giant cryptozoology monsters, you want to skip this. Are they gone? Good. Alright, if you're still here, that means you're in the cool club, welcome. And second, this next clip is going to be in Spanish, so I'm going to do my best to translate it, at least highlight some of the more important parts of the video itself. Now, this video takes place in Puerto Rico, where a small town of people are currently going out and seeking a supposed attack that recently happened, and they talk about it like it's an everyday event. Check it out. What's interesting about this clip it's the fact that it did take place in Puerto Rico, very close to where the, the attack for me happened. And it's weird to see people be so nonchalant about it. 
walking straight up and touching that dead sheep, it's something. But what I can't take away from the basic evidence is that the creature has to be large and as I stated already, people usually akin it to being as big as a bear or at least a baby bear. And if you've ever been on YouTube and been bored enough, as you can see, bears are not only capable of bumping cars, some of them use it as a pastime. Isn't that cute? Now, as I stated previously, the Chupacabra did not originate in Chile, correct. However, comma, it did have its fair share of Chupacabra attacks, and actually recently. And supposedly, since then, the Chupacabra's territory has spread everywhere from Chile, Puerto Rico, the Caribbean islands, heck, even in the US. But we'll get into that with a following clue. In one such location in Paraguay, a body is found bloated and rotting along the, the river side, and locals say that it's a chupacabra. Well, let's check it out. What I find fascinating about this, it's its human-like hands and protruding snout. Even looking at it in this state, it's clear to see where its fangs should be poking underneath. Now, this evidence does create kind of an awkward situation for my story. On one hand, it has hands. The chupacabra itself has always been stated as a creature with claws that could tear through flesh easily. Those little things, they probably can't do much. I'd be hard pressed to believe that this thing could even move my car, let alone pop up the jeep in the back. But we also have run into a problem if you look at other genus of chupacabra. That's right, there's probably more than one version of the chupacabra. Well, sort of. Let me explain. Deep in the heart of Texas, locals have identified a creature as the legendary Chupacabra. Is that offensive? Is that offensive? I don't... That might be offensive. Sorry, cowboys. Hashtag. Sorry. No, I'm not gonna do that. That's, that's, that's cringy. I'm not gonna do the hashtags. No. No, sorry. No hashtags on this channel, no, no. After being spotted by a patrol officer, word soon spread like wildfire across the state. Some sought it out, while others dismissed it as simply a dog with mange and nothing more. That is, until they caught one. He saw this strange animal sitting up here eating corn. He called me to come and look, and I said, Bubba, that looks like a baby chubacabra. You know, I hunted coons, you know, 20 years with dogs and all that, and I ain't never seen nothing look like that right there. Harmon says one of the big signs it's not a raccoon is its growl. Coons don't make that noise, or a possum. What makes that noise? I guess the chupacabra does, I don't know. It's never been proven to be uh, a unique species. There was always something out there that allegedly either caused harm or threatened to cause harm. Now what you might notice about this version of the chupacabra is that it has very little to do with its Puerto Rican cousin. It's smaller, more canine shaped, and most importantly, it has skin. Unlike the original lore surrounding this creature, this rendition of the chupacabra is scaleless and missing its unusual physique. Now does that mean that this chupacabra is the true chupacabra and all other versions of chupacabra are made up and false? Not exactly. It kind of depends on the lore you want to follow. One of the earliest legends that I've ever heard about the Chupacabra is that it was once created in a lab in Puerto Rico. It was a crossbreed between human DNA and some kind of creature. That being said, 
it would make sense that if they did make a chupacabra hybrid that to live in the tropical jungle, it would be scaly. It would have web, ha web hands and be able to move quickly, you know, through water from island to island. Now let's take a look at Texas chupacabra. It's hairless. It looks like a dog, but clearly it has weird hand digits. I think that if there was a scientist working in Puerto Rico to make a chupacabra, why wouldn't they test the same thing in another state, in another country, in another environment? Texas is known for its dry environment, so giving it webbed feet and scales doesn't make any sense. But making it small and agile, hairless, maybe a little bit more sense. I don't know. That's just a theory. So for argument's sake, let's go ahead and assume the Texas Chupacabra is just a new version of Chupacabra. It probably still shares some traits with its Puerto Rican version, <laughs> but not exactly physically. Here, let me show you. That growl. Though not exactly how I remember it, it is very haunting and it does make me feel somewhat nostalgic as if I've heard a noise similar to that. But hey, I was a young boy and uh, I don't know, maybe I'm reaching, but that's what this list is for. So let's continue. Ranches in Paraguay. In the town of Los Carares, a farmer by the name of Francisco Molina was drawn outside by the unrelentless barking of his dog. Armed with only his rifle and a flashlight, the curious man found the source of the commotion. After discovering a ransacked hen house, he turned his attention to find the culprit. Stumbling through the darkness, he flashed his light around the pen, and upon reaching the corner of the enclosure, he was astonished by what he saw. According to Molinas, there was some kind of three-foot-tall creature that resembled a bug and sported ominous looking red eyes. Now that sounds more like the Chupacabra we all know and fear. From its tall height to its weirdly shaped head, this actually fits more in tune with what we know as Chupacabra. To be able to give our Jeep a good shake, the creature would have to have a fair amount of weight behind it. Not a lot, but a fair amount. And although three feet isn't very tall at all, it could very well be slumped over like it's often depicted. If that's the case, at a full standing position, it's fair to assume that this creature could not only open that back door, but probably rip it off its hinges. Well, and as of now, this is looking pretty good for the ch old Chupacabra. My story seems to be falling in line. We know that the Chupacabra, it has to be tall enough to be able to move the car. Not only that, it has to be strong enough. So this story seems pretty great. Combine that with the growl of its cousin in Texas, and its clawed digits that we've been able to see time and again, and the trail of bodies found everywhere. Well, I almost forgot about that one. It's safe to assume that Chupacabra that I experienced was probably the same one. That is, except for one thing. So I'm going to be very honest. I have racked my brain, searched many a website, and ultimately come up short. Chupacabra is never said to be able to use telepathy. It's it's not able to just stop cars. Uh, in some renditions of the story, the Chupacabra is known to somehow move unnaturally, sometimes shapeshift. I didn't see that. Now, one could say that maybe, maybe the car stole out. You know, maybe the vehicle itself isn't that great. Maybe it really was my cousin playing a horrible trick on me. And if I find out that that's the case... Oh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I would never hurt family. But I did find myself very puzzled. What could this possibly add up to? What could this all mean? I took some time and meditated. Then, as I was watching my lava lamp, something occurred to me. When it happened to me, I was terrified. I was frozen in fear. And since then, I actually posted up a link on my Instagram asking people about their experiences. 
And a lot of the stories that I get, and a lot of the ones I find online, all repeat one thing. They stay there, frozen in fear. The farmer in Paraguay? Fear. Me that night? Paralyzed with fear. So, what if... Humor me, of course. What if the Chupacabra is able to attack you with fear? <laughs> I know, that's silly, but... A creature that can suck blood, and only sucks blood. There is countless pieces of evidence, and there are also so many different breeds. What if... What if Chupacabra can stop you by just being in, in its presence? Like some scary kind of silence from Doctor Who, or like a boogeyman that just waits. And when you see it, you don't know how to react. It scares you. What if... What if that was the Chupacabra? What if... <laughs>